All right, this is part two of the boat history. Fast forward after three really cool summers of kids coming out, water tubing, we did wakeboarding, we did fishing, we went out to dinner, we had dinners, we had picnics. They all got kind of bored. Jossie and I didn't, but the kids all did. And they got older and they had better things to do. So they stopped coming out. Some of them went away. And then we decided it would be cool to have longer adventures, but you can't get out of the sun, you can't go to the bathroom, you can't go overnight. So we were trying to find an overnight boat. We didn't have a lot of experience doing this. So we weren't quite sure what to look for. And we had to sell our boat. So we kind of had this revolving system. We were looking at some boats and trying to sell our boat. And eventually we did get our boat sold towards the end of the year. And just crazy coincidence, at the marina where we had kept the first boat, there was an identical year, identical company, uh, Crown Line boat, and we really liked the Crown Line boat. It was good quality, and we liked the way it was laid out. Identical year, identical boat to ours, except the open part in the front was closed, and there's a little bed down there and a little microwave and a little bathroom. So we were so excited, and we bought the boat while it was up on shore. This is now the second time we bought a boat without really being able to test it. Uh, but fortunately, the marina where we were was actually selling the boat for somebody else. So they eventually let us take it out. We went through the whole thing. We, we kind of crawled around a little bit. We thought it would work. And so we, after selling the first boat, bought this one. Uh, but it was late in the year. We didn't get to take it out really um, <clears throat> because the marina had closed. And so we kind of arranged for them to put it in the water in the spring of the next year. So summer number, I think it's gotta be four at this point, comes and we go out on the new boat. And from day one, it uh, don't tell the guy that bought this, I think, but uh, we were pretty sure that boat was haunted. It had leaks. It wouldn't start. Uh, one of the batteries was dead when we got it, even though they had stored it all winter with the battery charge on it. So within the first two weeks, that thing had been out of the water twice getting repairs done. Uh, the leaking was the worst part, though, um, because not only do you have to worry about the boat starting because the batteries were bad, uh, and even after the new battery went in, it was really not starting very well. Uh, we were worried that if it started taking on a lot of water and we couldn't get it started, the thing was going to sink. So we ended up spending the whole summer staying right near the end of the lake where the boat was. I don't think we ever went more than about five minutes uh, away from our marina. And it turned out by the end of the year after they replaced the batteries twice and after having all kinds of troubles that they actually had to pull the motor out of the boat. They had to replace the starter. They said they fixed the leaks. And I think they did because eventually it, it stopped leaking. But the whole summer, uh, the pump that would collect the water from the bottom of the boat would come on every 30 minutes and go for a solid 30 seconds, which we measured was like over a gallon of water. So this boat was taking on a gallon uh, of water an hour or more. So we uh we decided to sell that boat the other thing is the area where we would sleep is called a v-berth so if you're looking top down to the boat it, the sleeping area goes to the front of the boat and it's shaped like this and either you're knocking your head together or your feet don't fit and it looked good when we tried it out on the shore but actually trying to spend time down there we realized that it was just too small you couldn't stand up so every time you went down you were kind of ducking your head and uh, so it wasn't going to quite work, but mostly it was haunted. So we sold the boat. Um, we were very fortunate. Uh, at the end of the year, they fixed all the problems. It was actually running pretty well, and we had uh, marketed it. We had, uh, this is, by the way, a, a completely different story. Don't ever sell anything used. It's a pain. I had guys that would call me, talk about it, long conversations, and say, I'm coming down from somewhere far away, halfway after they'd left, they'd call two hours into a four-hour trip. Yeah, I'll be there in about two hours and just never show up. I called this one guy's wife and said, hey, your husband never showed up. He was supposed to come by the boat. I don't know where he is. So that was a big nightmare. But in any event, we sold the boat. And because we knew the boat was sold and it was the end of the year, we were able to start looking for the next one, which is a whole different story, maybe a different video. But we did get our boat sold. Uh, we had to get a broker involved, which, of course, costs a little bit because they take a percentage. But um, you know, good good news, bad news. The broker had the boat on a Wednesday. I think he had a guy come out looking at it on a Friday, and the dude bought it on a Saturday. So it was worth it because we couldn't sell it on our own. So that was the story of the haunted, broken, too small boat number two. But the upside to that was, even though it was almost identical to our old boat, to make that front end work, it was about four feet longer. 
and a little bit heavier and a little bit taller. I mean, it really was almost identical, but th those measurements made it um, possible to kind of get used to driving a slightly bigger boat. So it helped us when we stepped up to the next size. So, you know, silver lining, uh, but ultimately that, that boat was not a good experience. So that was the short version between boat number one and boat number three coming up in the next video.